my name is Abuna Wajibari from Mary Science Lab, and today I will be talking about convergent and divergent functions. No, not functions, but technically functions. So, today we're going to be talking about sequences, series, and uh, how that all relates to functions being convergent and divergent and all that. And a prerequisite for this is basically, I guess, a derivative. So basically, you've got to know how to take derivatives and limits if you want to understand this. But that's not too bad of a requirement. So what are sequences in series? Well, they're pretty simple. Let's take a sequence like, I don't know, a n equals, uh, I'm going to pick something like 5n. So or it can just be anything relating to n. So like 5n, or you could have n to the 5, which would grow very rapidly, or you could have 5 to the n, which would also grow very rapidly. So uh, just so I can stick with something I know and I don't fry my brain trying to calculate values, I'm going to start with 5n. So let's list the values. Term 1, term 2, term 3, term 4, term 5, so on. Term 1, 5 times 1, 5. Term 2, 5 times 2, 10. Term 3, term 4, you probably get the deal. This is going to continue on and on. So something like a n is just going to be 5 times that number n. a 4 is going to be 5 times 4 or in this case, 20. So, now, what is a series? What's, how is it different from a sequence? Well, series is represented by S of n, and it's not like a <coughs> series, um, and it's not like a sequence, that instead of having all these terms, it adds up a certain amount of them. With this notation that we call sigma, uh, I'm lazy, but most people add these little two lines on the end of the sigma. So, you can basically put this from n equals 1 to infinity, and then the, uh, and you express it for your sequence, like 5n from before. This is basically saying it's summing up all the values from n equals 1 to infinity, or in other words, it's summing up all the terms. So, it's doing... 5 times 1 plus 5 times 2 plus 5 times 3 all the way to infinity. So you could put like some very large number on the end. I don't really care. So this is a sequence. It's adding up this number of terms. Or another way to describe it would be saying <coughs> Sn would basically be equal to a n plus a n minus 1, a n minus 2, etc, etc, etc. Alright, so, how, what does convergent and divergent mean? Well, you probably already know what convergent means. Name is self-explanatory. It basically means that the sequence s of n as n approaches infinity, well, you can't really take the limit of a sequence. So more like, as n approaches infinity for a sequence, keep getting the name of sequence and series mixed up. <coughs> if it's equal to some constant, we could call it, I guess, uh, I don't know, n. If it converges at some constant, then uh, that's what we call convergent. Divergent can be any one of three results. Or two results, I guess. It basically means when you take a limit and n approaches infinity. So basically when your n gets very, very large, a of n gets either one of the infinities or just simply does not exist. So, 
those are uh, how we do convergent and divergent. In fact, let me show you two examples. A divergent one would be something like, oh no, the example that I just showed you, 5n. Why? Because, think about it. This is basically talking about when the terms get bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, there is no place where the answer to this stops growing, right? I mean, it keeps growing, it keeps growing, because you add 5 to every term. The amount you add never decreases. So, in other words, you could also say that Sn, or the sequence, the this is equal to plus minus infinity or DNE or whatever. Because it's this, uh, what this is basically saying is that the sum of all the terms will eventually approach infinity. Why? Because the sum of the terms just keeps getting bigger and gets bigger at an increasing rate too. Like think about it. 5 plus 10 some of the first two terms, 15, right? 5 plus 10 plus 15, that becomes 30. 5 plus 10 plus 15 plus 20, that becomes 50. And even uh, making it so on, that's 75, uh, 105, uh, 140, 180. And you can see, it keeps growing, and the amount it grows is actually bigger each time. That's because each term you add is bigger. So, that means that obviously, the sum of the terms will approach infinity. Or, in other words, it's divergent. Now, let me show you an example of something convergent. So, that would be something like this. Looks a little advanced, but trust me, it's not actually that hard. So, 1 over 2 to the n. So, that would be like 1 over 2, then 1 over 4, because 2 squared, 1 over 8. And technically, if you wanted to be really technical, I guess you could include term, no, no, let's not include 1 here. 1 over 8, 1 over 16, 1 over 32, etc. Now, you might be asking, how is this convergent? Well, <coughs> the thing is, the terms decrease every time. And I can't show you exactly how this is convergent. Well, we'll do that in a future video. But basically, I can show you this sort of geometric representation. Let's take a rectangle with sides 1 half and 1. This has area 1 half, right? Then we have, and uh, let's just take that, and we have now a rectangle with sides one half and one half, making it one fourth. Now let's take that and make it one eighth. This is one fourth, this is one half. That becomes one sixteenth. 132nd, 164th, 128th, etc., and etc., and etc., and etc., and etc. But as you can see, the total approaches, this side is going to approach 1, and this side, we, as we know, is already, oh, sorry, excuse me, 1. So the area of this is just going to approach 1. When you add up all these terms, because they're decreasing in value, it will always end up in being 1. Okay, so just a one quick way to test if it's going to become divergent. Uh, so basically, if the terms are increasing, if the terms are increasing, then it's divergent. If 
the term. Sorry. If the terms are decreasing, you might have either a divergent or a convergent one on your hand. And now, I'm going to show you one example that relates to all of this. And we're going to use a similar related uh, calculus rule while talking about this. So let's try to find the limit as x approaches infinity of sine x over x. And this is much the same concept. We're trying to find the, uh, the limit as n approaches infinity of something like this, which we could call a sequence. We can even say maybe this is a n equals sine n over n. But how would we do this? Well, the conventional way of doing that. Oh, wait, I just realized. I can show you how this would end up being divergent. One way to test if it's going to be divergent is if the limit as n approaches 0 of a of n is equal to infinity, uh, plus minus infinity, DNE, whatever, divergent. If it's equal to zero, you have either a divergent or convergent on your hand. Now, as an example, we can just take the limit at this approaches infinity, but 5 times infinity, which we're basically substituting here for very big, large number, is also going to be infinity. So, uh, mm. something like 1 over 2n, the limit as that approaches infinity, is going to become 1 over 2 raised to a large, uh, a large power, or really anything raised to a really large power, is going to come out not just as large, but even larger. Think about that. 2 to the 10 is already 1024. So 2 to the infinity, we can just call that effectively infinity. It's a substitution for a very big number, remember. 1 over infinity is effectively 0. Remember, very big number. And if you think about it, it makes sense. If the numbers keep getting smaller, they effectively get closer and closer to 0. So, since this approaches zero, it's either a divergent or a convergent, and we've discovered that it's a convergent. We can use this divergent-convergent strategy in order to find out if this is divergent or convergent. So, sine of x over x, how can we do this? Well, let's think about the function sine of x. Oscillates between minus one and one, right? But we know it's always between these lines, which we can essentially say are y equals 1 and y equals minus 1. So now we know we can talk about the squeeze theorem for a little bit. So let's say we have a function uh, f of x on the top over here approaching, uh, let's say, y equals l. And we have this function down here, h of x, which is also approaching y equals l. Then, if g of x over here is stuck in the middle, so given this definition, sorry, let's rewrite that. So given this definition, and the fact that f of x is approaching L and H of X is also approaching L what will G of X approach? Well the obvious answer is it can't go anywhere above L because that would be violating the uh, less than F of X it can't go anywhere below F of uh, uh, Y equals L because that would be violating the above H of X rule so it's got to go right in the middle. Y also equals L. So basically, peer pressure is less than or equal to sine X is less than or equal to uh, 1. And here you could have your big realization, divide everything by X.
and I'm pretty sure we went over this before, but the limit is x approaches infinity of 1 over a really big number. So 1 over a really big number, so for example infinity, just effectively 0. Same thing for the negative. You can't have negative 0, that's the same as 0. So that means that if minus 1 over x is approaching 0, 1 over x is approaching 0, sine of x will also approach 0. Uh, sine of x over x, sorry, will also approach 0. So, if we can find that out, we can decide that this is a convergent function. Alright, that's it. Thank you everybody for watching.